Georgia is interesting. And I say interesting because I have not seen a single person rank them as the best defense in college football for 2024. But in 2021, they had the country's best defense by a mile. In 2022, I can't exactly remember if they were up there. They were not number one in points per game or points allowed per game like they were in 2021. They were fifth, fourth, but they were pretty close. And they had to face an LSU offense in the SEC championship game that was good. They played a top two offense in Tennessee that was right up there with Ohio State that year, and they held them to 13 points. They were able to limit Ohio State's offense in one of the best games that I've ever seen Ryan Day call and one of the best games I've ever seen Ohio State play. They were able to limit it to only three points in the fourth quarter after Ohio State gouged them with 38 points in three quarters. And that was an Ohio State offense that matched up incredibly well with that Georgia defense, who in 21 and 22 was much stronger up front than they were in the secondary. Last year was a little bit of the opposite, though. They were strong at defending the pass, especially with their defensive backs. But up front, they struggled to get pressure, and they struggled to stop the run at times, too, being gouged by Alabama and Auburn in the ground attack, respectively. Their starters for this season are projected to be Michael Williams at defensive end, Nazir Stackhouse and Warren Brinson at defensive tackle, Chaz Chambliss in this hybrid jack position. He can be a defensive end or he can function sort of as a linebacker. Smile Munden Jr. and C.J. Allen at linebacker, Dalen Everett and Julian Humphrey at corner, Malachi Starks and Dan Jackson at safety, Starks is strong safety, Jackson is free safety respectively, and Jonel Aguero at nickelback. This defense last year was not at the same caliber as their 21 or 22 defenses, but it was still one of the country's best. They were seventh in opponent offensive points per game, only allowing 16.5. They were eighth in opponent points per play, allowing 0.261 points per play. They allowed 291.3 opponent yards per game. Again, eighth in the country. They were 10th in opponent yards per play, allowing 4.7 yards per play. They were tied with Florida State, only forcing 1.2 takeaways per game, 104th. So they didn't give their offense time and time again opportunities to score, and yet that offense was still one of the best in college football. It was very impressive, the job that Mike Bobo did, and also the system and the caliber of offense that Todd Monken left behind. Georgia returned 61% of their production from their 2023 defense. It's 61st nationally. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but trust me, for Georgia, it is. That is a lot for Georgia. Absolutely. Given all the five stars they bring back, all the four stars, some three stars that they've developed rather nicely, and the fact that their, their area of weakness, their question mark, their weak link, as I said to qualify for the teams that I'm talking about, for these defenses, your weak link, your weakness would be a strong point on most other defenses. And that's Georgia's rushing defense. They allowed 3.7 yards per carry, which was outside of the top 25. Opponents ran in them 30.2 tries per game on average, and they allowed 112.2 yards per game on the ground. Those are weak numbers bad numbers by Kirby Smart and Georgia standards, but at many other schools, that would be something to be applauded for. If you are Kentucky, if you are Arkansas, heck, even if you are, let's say, Missouri, if you are Texas A&M, if you are LSU compared to last year's defense for sure, you'd be pleased with those numbers. For Georgia, not so much, and their run defense killed them against Alabama. It nearly killed them against Auburn, you know, the same team who got blown out by New Mexico State, but then competed with and nearly beat both Georgia and Alabama. It's just what Jordan Hare does. It's also what Hugh Freeze does. He's a genius against top 10 opponents and then finds a way to lose to Memphis or Vanderbilt or Arkansas and now New Mexico State. My favorite players and the best players on this Georgia defense are Michael Williams, Smile Munden Jr., Dalen Everett, and Malachi Starks. 
Micah Williams had four and a half sacks and six and a half tackles for loss last year. And that was him being involved in a rotation, a big time rotation. Smile Munden Jr. had five tackles for loss, three sacks, a pass defended, and nearly 70 total tackles. And Everett and Starks combined had 12 passes defended, four interceptions, three tackles for loss, and 81 total tackles. The secondary is an area with some questions as Jan Jackson, or Dan Jackson, uh, Jonell Aguero, and Julian Humphrey are some newer players. Tyke Smith left the program along with some other players. All of them went off to the NFL. But I think that this unit, even with their losses at secondary, they return a lot on their front. It's the reason why Jamin Dumas Johnson left for Kentucky. He got hurt, and he knew that he would not be a guaranteed starter because the depth at linebacker with Munden Jr., with C.J. Allen, with some of the backups that they have is just absolutely incredible. Georgia leads the the SEC in my all-SEC teams, which I will release when I showcase my SEC predictions in a video. They have over they have over 20 players on that list, and Jalen Walker is another player to pay attention to in that linebacker room, and I think that Georgia, they may not be the best in the country on defense this year, maybe not, but they can, can, they can certainly contend to be that number one defense, and with the offense that they have, that's all that matters. They're definitely going to be a superior defensive unit compared to what they were last year, and I think they are in this category. Thank you for watching this cut of Touchdown Talk. Remember to like the video to help this channel get into the algorithm and grow as we approach the 2024 season, and also subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you can participate in our giveaway at 20,000 subscribers, help us to grow, join this awesome community, and also be notified when we release new content here on College Football with Sam. I would like to thank my Patreon members for sponsoring this video and channel. A shout out to Crash2488 and Brasco Rascal for being $25 a month Heisman members. A shout out to $10 a month American members, all American members, Chris Lane, Connor Little OH, and Ismar. And a shout out to $5 all conference members, John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janaisha Cockrell. Have a great day, guys, and we will see you soon. Bye.